now it's time to put up story poles. And uh, they're called story poles because they tell the story. They, as long as these are uh, perfectly plumb and perfectly square to each other, uh, that's the way your building will end up because we're setting the block to the string. And as long as these remain rigid and plumb, uh, we're good to go. It's, uh, it's really great to, to use metal instead of wood. Uh, you'll see the two buys used a lot of times as story poles, but there's a, a drawback to that, which is that when they stand up straight in the sun for a couple days, they're not straight anymore. You know, they tend to do this or that or something, and it's not really a story pole anymore. It's lying. It's a lying pole. <laughs> you know, it's not really where you want to be. So this works well. These are uh, mason's blocks or string blocks or line blocks or whatever. These little, oops, ah, okay. These little guys right here, uh, factory made item. Here, you want to see that, Josh? Yeah, yeah here they are. Right there, right there. These little guys right here. Let me, let me put, try to focus now. <laughs> I got it. Okay, good. Um, and these little blocks are real handy because you can uh, attach the string to it. All right. So this little gizmo right here, maybe I should do this right in front of the camera and you should all watch because this is kind of a, it's, there's a trick to everything. And, and the trick to this one is simple, but um, you need to do it to maximize the efficiency of the, of the block. So you start by, just tie a little knot in the end of the string, okay? A little knot. And then that goes right here, like so. All right? Now, theoretically, that could work, you know, by itself. But, of course, if the string falls or something, it'll just come off and, you know, what have you. So to make it adjustable and to stay in place, you do a couple of half hitches. You were all Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, right? Come on. A couple of half hitches, real simple knot. And the, the great thing about the half hitch is you can make it, as you pull it in, you can make it go where you want it to be. And where you want it to be is right there in that groove, okay? So like I say, this is it's kind of fun. You, you should practice a little bit. We'll give you an A if you can do it at the end of the class. Um, so there, you have that. Now, now, at this point, you do need two people because the whole thing is pressure uh, driven. There's no nails or screws or stuff like that. So I need Austin to hold that there for me while I do this one. Um, so exactly how long do I need the string to be? Well, you don't really need to know. Um, you can just give yourself a lot of extra room Tie your knot again, same deal. Not ski. Not ski. In the slot again. Now, gee, I'm, I'm way too long. Well, I got a couple of half hitches to put on here, for starters. Okay, no, no, Austin, let me get it all down here. Just, just leave it. Oh, yeah. That's good right there. That's good. Okay, so a couple of halves, still too long. Well, that's what this little, see this little circle right here? This is your adjustment hole, okay? You can just keep putting those half hitches on there. A little burr on that one until you get where you need to be. And because that's indented, it won't interfere with the block sitting flush against the, uh, the angle iron. And you just do that until you get, oh, I went too much. Um, 
rookie mistake. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So now when I pull this in there, and that's a straight line. Bing. C sharp, B natural. Uh, now the beauty of this is that, did we, you didn't mark these already, did you? Okay. Um, the beauty of this system is now continued by the fact that we're going to find the high point of the foundation. Okay, we want to know, so Austin has already shot an arbitrary line on here. Doesn't matter how high it is, but with the builder's level, we've got a line that goes all the way around. Then you take your tape measure, which I don't have either, and you measure down from the top of the foundation to the string. And you just kind of go around and, and do that because what you're looking for is the high point. The high point, of course, would be the smallest number that you read on your tape because we're going to lay we want to know the high point because we're going to lay that we want to lay that first course which we're going to lay in cement mortar we want to lay it perfectly level and the idea that the foundation is always perfectly level is erroneous especially when you get into longer spans and stuff like that you're going to have usually you're going to have a little variance so, but, but what you, when, you, when you have the variance in that bottom course, you'd rather make it up with a little thicker cement mortar than you would trying to shave a block, which is a real difficult deal. Okay. So you find the high point, and then you allow a half inch of mortar at that point, and then you don't care where it is everywhere else. The worst thing that's going to happen is it's going to be thicker. All right. And since we're laying the bottom course in cement mortar, and we're doing that because we're on cement, okay? And the rest of the way, we're gonna go with our uh, earthen mortar, stabilized earthen mortar, okay? Um, did we establish the high point on this already, or? No. Okay, well, let's do that right now. Which one's your level line? Right here. Right there, okay. All right. But with these adjustable um, legs, we can do quite a bit as far as moving them in and out. Um, you know, we can loosen this up and make it longer or make it shorter, which is real handy in a situation like this where you've got a door buck and it's close to the corner. And you really don't want this to come over the door buck because then it's in the way of using the door for the rest of the project. You know, so you want to keep that open. Um, these are 10 footers it comes in 20 foot lengths and so you buy a 20 and you get two tens um, typically that's going to do a story you know um, the the rule of thumb on how high you can go before a bond beam is 10 times the wall thickness so if you have a 10 inch thick wall like this one you can go 100 inches of earth before you have to put another bond beam, okay? If it was a 14 inch wall, you could go 140 inches before you had a bond beam. Um, so, back to, and, and that's kind of a long-winded answer to why is 10 feet good, because now if you're gonna do a second story or go above that bond beam, you just move these up and remount them on that bond beam and you're good for another 10 feet or nine foot six you know you lose whatever you put down here you don't have any spacers between the story poles and the foundation do you uh yes i do uh they're built into these poles uh ryan was asking about well i can see we've added to the spacer with a rock here so we've made the spacer even bigger but this is what he's talking about. See this little rock right here that's pushing this up? They're actually built with, they have a welded piece right here so that they should do that on their own, theoretically. But if they get bent a little bit, uh, you know, that's not enough forgiveness. And so Austin has noted that and stuck a little rock in here. What that's important, why that's important is you don't want the string to touch these because then the wall's crooked. 
or the whole idea of the string is to keep it plumb and, and the course is level. Um, the angle iron, this angle iron, my favorite is this size, which is three by three by three sixteenths. Okay. Um, the reason I like the three is because these guys fit on here without the wood hanging over the edge. Okay. The reason I like the three sixteenths is that the eighth will bend e too easily and the quarter is way too heavy to haul around. So that's, that's how I came up with the 3 sixteenths. How do you attach it at the bottom? At the bottom, we attach it to the, directly to the foundation. Uh, if the foundation is way off, we may have to shim it, or we may have to get a grinder out and grind the corner back a little until it's where it's supposed to be. Because you want, these are the, this is the, the story pole. This is the truth of the matter. You know, so you want these to be, uh, you know, as good as they can be. So that's what we do down there. And then we just, we use a tap con screw and screw them in. And that's not, all that's doing is holding it against the corner and holding it up and down. It really, you know, it doesn't, it's not like, you know, but if you pre-drill and put a tap con in, it's, it's pretty easy. It's a two man deal. You know, you've got a guy here with the level, okay, do it, you know, kind of thing to get started. And then you can make the adjustments with these guys going in and out. You can get plumb this way and plumb this way and, make them perfect okay so right now Austin and I are gonna look for the high point so it's this one mm -hmm. all right and here you know if you don't know and I'm, I'm sorry to insult the intelligence of anyone who does know but uh, you know when you're looking for plum in a situation like this uh, the lowest number you can find will be plum see there's 48 and 3 8 there's 48 and a quarter, 48 and a quarter, okay? And then we'll go down here, check this right here. 48 and 3 eighths. And right over here, 48 and a half. Okay, so what's the high point on that wall? Right there, the lowest number, okay? This is, this spot right here is, what was this one? 48 and a half. Half, okay. This is a quarter inch higher right here than this corner right here. We can make that up with a mortar, rather do that than shave the block. All right, that's why we're finding the high point. Okay, should we set it up all the way around? Just so 48 and an eighth. Okay, so we have determined that the high point of the foundation actually is a pretty level stretch that runs from here all the way along here. Now that we know that, we can make the bottom mark on our story pole for our first course, okay? Because this is the high point. You're, as long as we start with that number, all we'll have to do anywhere else is thicken the mortar. We won't have to shave any blocks. Okay, so this is our high point. Our block's three and a half in this particular instance, and we want to do a half inch mortar so we're going to mark this at four inches, okay? And then we're going to match that mark all the way around by measuring down from this level line. And at some points at there, it's going to, that mark's going to be four inches above the foundation, but over here it's going to be four and three-eighths, but we don't care. We can add the mortar. You just want to mark four. Right there, four. Okay, and that is, where's our, oh, there it is. Okay, so cut a foot, now let's go this way. Four. I wanted to see the level line, I don't need the string, you know what I mean? Okay, so hold me on four. How nice. 44 on the dot. All right, so 44 inches down from our arbitrary level line is the top of the course at the highest point in the foundation. First course. First course. Everybody got that? Have I worked it to death? No? Okay.
to see it. Right, right there. There. Mark four. Okay. okay. And one more time. Good enough. All right, now we can take the strings that we have set up for this uh, rectangle. It is a rectangle, five foot four by five foot eight, um, and put them at, at that point and set our first course. Okay, but before we do that, we're going to mark the story poles the rest of the way up. 